Hi, this is Tom from ZeroDefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through Wilson's disease. You can find written notes on this topic at ZeroDefinals.com slash Wilson's or in the gastroenterology section of the ZeroDefinals medicine book. Let's jump straight in. Wilson's disease is the excessive accumulation of copper in the body and the tissues. It's caused by a mutation in the Wilson's disease protein, which is on chromosome 13. And the Wilson's disease protein also has the catchy name of ATP7B, copper binding protein, and is responsible for various functions, including the removal of excessive copper in the liver. Genetic inheritance of Wilson's disease is autosomal recessive. So what are the features? Most people with Wilson's disease present with one or more of these three different systems. Hepatic problems or liver problems which occur in 40% of people. Neurological problems or problems with the brain which occur in 50% of people. Or psychiatric problems which occur in 10% of people. Now copper deposition in the liver leads to chronic hepatitis. So inflammation of those liver cells that have excessive copper in them. And eventually this leads to liver cirrhosis. Copper deposition in the central nervous system leads to neurological and psychiatric problems. Now the neurological symptoms can be subtle and range from concentration or coordination difficulties to dysarthria, which is speech difficulties, and dystonia, which is abnormal muscle tone. Copper deposits in the basal ganglia in the brain leads to something called Parkinsonism. And this is where you get three things. Tremor, bradykinesia or small movements and rigidity. So tremor, bradykinesia and rigidity. These Parkinsonism symptoms are symmetrical, which is what differentiates them from the asymmetrical symptoms that you find in Parkinson's disease. Psychiatric symptoms can vary from mild depression to full-blown psychosis and the underlying cause of Wilson's disease is often missed and treatment is delayed. Kaiser Flesher rings are found in the cornea of the eye and what they are are deposits in Decimet's corneal membrane. So this is small circular brown rings that present around the eye in patients with Wilson's disease. And these brownish circles surrounding the iris can usually be seen by the naked eye, but proper assessment requires a slit lamp examination. There's a few other features. Often you get a hemolytic anemia where the red blood cells are being broken down too quickly. You can get renal tubular damage, which leads to renal tubular acidosis. And you can get osteopenia, which is a loss of the bone mineral density. So if you suspect someone has Wilson's disease, how do you actually diagnose it? Well, the initial investigation of choice to screen for somebody who might have Wilson's disease is to do a serum ceruloplasmin. And this is a protein that normally carries copper in the blood. It can be falsely normal or elevated in cancer or inflammatory conditions. So if somebody has cancer or an inflammatory condition and you suspect Wilson's disease, don't rely completely on this result. So it's not specific to Wilson's disease. Some other conditions can cause raised ceruloplasmin. You can do a liver biopsy, which is to test the liver for its copper content. And this is the definitive gold standard test for a diagnosis. So if you want to establish a definitive diagnosis, liver biopsy is the way to go. You can also make a diagnosis based on the 24-hour urine copper assay. So this is how much copper is in the urine over a 24-hour period. But this is quite a cumbersome test where you have to continuously collect urine samples for a full 24 hours. Alternatively, there are scoring systems that take into account various features and laboratory test results to establish a diagnosis of Wilson's. There's a few other investigations that will point you in the direction of Wilson's disease. One is to check the serum copper and this is usually low in Wilson's disease, to look for Kaiser Flesher rings, and to do an MRI brain, which can show, again, some non-specific changes that will indicate Wilson's disease. So how do we manage Wilson's disease? Well, you need to remember that they need to remove that excessive copper from the body. So you use something called copper chelation. 
And there's two main medications that can be used for copper chelation. One is penicillamine and the other is trientine. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget there's plenty of other resources on the Zero to Finals website, including loads and loads of notes on various different topics that you might cover in medical school with specially made illustrations. There's also a whole test section where you can find loads of questions to test your knowledge and see where you're up to in preparation for your exams. There's also a blog where I share a lot of my ideas about a career in medicine and tips on how to have success as a doctor. And if you want to help me out on YouTube, you can always leave me a thumbs up, give me a comment or even subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when the next videos are coming out. So I'll see you again soon.